inside the cockpit of the vessel taken on one kick. There was a time when I would have gone to Reddit for this, but what is the difference between hyperdrive and warp? Everything and nothing. Neither involves you moving, so there's no time dilation. With warp, you compress space-time in front of you and stretch it out behind you. In hyperdrive or intradimensional drive, you move space-time around. It's convoluted for short hauls, but the greater the distance to cover, the faster it is compared with warp. If, as you said, warp 10 is max, hyperdrive would be magic in comparison if you were crossing the galaxy. If it's so awesome, why isn't this hyperdrive thing more popular? Warp is merely inflating and deflating a balloon. Hyperdrive is folding one. You need a profound understanding of physics and statistics. It takes a knack that, so far, only I have mastered. <laughs> I can make balloon animals. Before I'm done being interested, doesn't that folding move everyone else? Now you're talking reference frames. From your perspective, yes. From theirs, no. Done. <clears throat> Sorry to interrupt. Uh, it might be a good idea for you to give a bit of a speech to our passengers. They're a little nervous. About? They've never flown. They're afraid of falling. Since you're their rescuer, a little reassurance from you could go a long way. Reassurance of the general public is a needs work area of my post office performance evaluation. Hyperdrive or not, we don't have time to drop them off anywhere, which means they're coming to Sailstone with us. We don't want to be arriving at that setting with them already in a high state of anxiety. Go ahead, you'll be fine. All right, I'll talk to them. Shh, Alexandra looks like she wants to speak. She does. The thing about space is that there is a lot of it, so the odds of hitting something are really low. Well, hitting anything that would matter. What if the engine stops working? We just stop moving. No falling and crashing or any of the sort of stuff that can happen flying around a planet. What if they stop working before we are in space? Ship flight is extremely safe. Soon we'll be out in space, which, as was previously pointed out, is mostly empty. Then the hyperdrive comes online, which involves folding space-time. I don't understand. Neither do I. Intradimensional folding, a precursor to interdimensional... It's complicated. Anyway, if it's at all like warp, should anything go wrong, anything at all, well, then I can assure you that you will have wished we had crashed. Great chat. I'll be in the cockpit. What the hell, lady? Fail. What? That was the worst speech I've ever heard. Did you see their faces? They're pumped. Oh, hey, Cole One, what's up? It was a great speech. See? I was perfectly fine before, but now I'm terrified. Terrified? You're not supposed to be terrified. You're supposed to feel safe and excited. <gasps> oh, then your speech was disastrously bad, super awful. It couldn't have been worse. Fix this. <sighs> Oompa Loompas, I forgot, I forgot to mention that this, that this ship, ship is magic, magic. so no, we'll be perfectly, perfectly safe. safe. Great! Hear that, everyone? I'm going to go now. Thank you for dropping by. Oh, magical? Fiddlehead's the one who told me it was. Fine. If we're all vaporized in a hyperdrive cataclysm, I will apologize for lying. Aboard the Starhopper Bridge. We're clear to land. Bring us in. Ma'am? I used monosyllabic words. Uh, understood, ma'am. The planet can move all the strangelets? It only takes one. Sailstone is lifting her veil and inviting us in. Well, actually, it's me she's inviting in. You get to tag along. And the BGO ships? Not on the list. So if they follow... I have no say. But you do have expectations. I have one singular expectation. Ahead. Subluminal point five. Subluminal? Ma'am? Liquefaction is making you apprehensive? Concern for the ship and her crew, ma'am. How noble. Not cowardly at all. 
Should a strangelet come into contact with the hull, do you think the speed of impact changes the outcome in any way? I suppose not, ma'am. You suppose correctly. Warp? Yes. Give it a sense of urgency. We want those BGO ships wondering what the rush is all about. One of BGO's ships is following, ma'am. The cruiser. And now it's liquefying. Sailstone is not one for suffering uninvited guests. On the bridge of the ship, from one kick. Quite an adventure so far, goddess. On the bright side, it's good that you uncovered and managed to destroy another one of Ezra's conduit labs. And I'm glad the care package has proven useful to both of you. Pack adult diapers in the next one. We will make preparations for housing the clones when you eventually return. I leave it with you gals how you want to handle Bronson in my absence. Tactfully. It's not unheard of for clones to be used to develop idiosyncratic pathogens for covert assassinations. Bronson will know this as well. If he funded the Harvest clone, he could still claim complete ignorance. We have a few good readers in our clique. Have one or two of them around when he responds. None of the ladies mentioned anything telling when he was informed that you were on one kick. He's either been highly trained to evade detection, or the name had no meaning. The location of the lab would be a secret. The name not getting a reaction out of the guy means nothing. Wait until you tell him we have his clone. Even if his guilt is detected, any suspected subterfuge from our readers would be inadmissible in a world government court. He's on my planet, and it would be completely admissible with me. You wouldn't instigate a political incident. Because that's so out of character. Goddess, you would at least talk to Bronson before any form of reprisal. She's all about establishing an open dialogue. What I'm trying to say is, he left. Left? Leaving. Left or leaving? Yes. Yes? Yes to what? Oh, I have to go, Goddess. My time allotment for a re-usage is up. I don't want to put anyone out. Rules are rules, without which it would be anarchy. Goodbye. Time allotment? Is she on a prison phone? Intradimensional drive engaged. Now. I hope you don't mind, but I sing Navigate. (laughs) Always room for another first soprano. Looks like we've got another call. It's Ali. Hey Al, what's up? Alexandra, we've received a communique from the BGO. They had two ships following the Sailstone system. A ship assumed to be Ezra's arrived and is proceeding to the planet. We're not far behind. We're not? Thanks to me and the fold magic of hyperdrive. There you go, Al. We're running all the red lights. I have some troubling news, Goddess. I'm afraid one of the BGO vessels, in its attempt to follow, was converted to strange matter. The Coven believes Sailstone is interested in receiving Coven members only. Believes? You should be safe. (laughs) Says the woman not flying headlong into a solar system-sized cloud of strangelets. Whatever is going to happen, it's going to happen on the planet. How can you be so sure we're going to make it? Because this entire scenario reads like an Ezra setup. Oh, well, there you go. If it feels like that, we should be fine. (laughs) She's an artist of deception. Unparalleled. Right. The tip-off was the hyperdrive ship being handed to us. Handed to us? You destroyed a pirate enclave to get it. Ez knows her marks, which in this case is me. She'd know that this ship was not even close to being unattainable. You had to fight an entire town, and demonically possessed cannibals, and a dragon. Actually, dragons. Sound and fury meaning nothing. Exactly. Even when you know she's playing you, you can't help but respect her crafty sleight of hand. We're going into a trap? That was kind of established from the outset. I mean, besides the whole Leviathan thing. Besides? No, my guess is that's pretty much still it. 
only with little twists like isolating us on a planet inside a cloud of certain death. But you never know. The Leviathan thing could be a ruse, a distraction away from her real objective. She's a master at this stuff. Real objective? Like what? No clue. Kind of intriguing, eh? No. Jane, do you mind coming up to the cockpit? Jing, you're back? Don't shoehorn in on Al's phone call allotment. Hello, goddess. I won't. What's up? First, I thought you'd want to know. A BGO military escort was lost in the Strangelet Cloud. Survivors? None. That's not the only reason we called you up here. Goddess, then I mentioned to the Covens that the clones would be coming to Evermore. Some of the priestesses, given Ezra's history, suspected that her intention is to attempt to trigger psychopathy in the clones and use them collectively as a conduit for Leviathan. Like the basement clones, only a fresh batch. She may have finally worked out the entire process. And we're delivering the clones right to her. She got us to steal her own inventory to keep herself in good standing with her customers. This is at least a two-tiered screw-over, us and her customers. You can't tell me that is not a little impressive. At least, how much more screw-over could she pack in? Well, Chen and Tamerlane losing big and Bronson potentially being outed. Some or all of that might simply be collateral damage, or it could be another twist. You never know. It's like watching a magician. You admire this woman? We all wish things could be different. I don't underestimate her. We're all still clear on the mission, and Dr. Rising is still considered a significant threat? Yeah, yeah. Ezra's likely not going to play her hand until the last minute. And, if at all possible, she'll want to be able to see our reaction. She likes an audience? Yes, there is an element of that involved. However, in an odd and perverse way, she's also seeking to impress Alexandra. The impressing is about to start. We'll be dropping out of hyperdrive shortly and then chugging along to our demise at Subluminal. You will soon be under the Shroud of Leviathan. True that. That is ominous speak for what, exactly? We will be hidden from the Coven. We won't be able to be a part of a gathering. You'll be slightly out of phase with the universe. And slightly in phase with what? Yeah, we should probably know that. Hell. Outside of the shuttle, on Sailstone. Gentlemen, for the insertion of the auger, follow my direction to the letter. We don't want to irritate Sailstone. Yes, ma'am. I distinguish the end from the beginning, and ancient times from what is still to come, saying, My purpose will be established, and I will accomplish all my good pleasure. Poetry. The Bible. Isaiah 46, 10. Your interest in the book extends beyond the Mandela effect, then? It does not. But I do possess more than a passing familiarity, as I do with many things. Translation? For our purposes, the surest way to predict the future is to create it. What is going on with the Invictus? Could you be more specific? Seriously? It looks like an enormous Frankenstein's Flying Dutchman pavilion has been built out from a mountainside. Well, its size is what it is. As for the aesthetic, it appears that the ship's living tissue has become altered, much like the crew itself. You might not be too far off with your Flying Dutchman analogy. Living tissue? The Invictus is partially organic? An essential ingredient in traveling interdimensionally. You're still of the mind that you're going to fly it out of here? Yes. It didn't crash into a mountain as much as it materialized partially inside one. The parts are still there. We'll simply reverse the accident. Is that all? I give slim odds on that happening. Gentlemen, right over there. Yes, ma'am. What is that for? Some kind of mini transmission tower? Yes. That's it exactly. Ma'am, you asked to be kept abreast of any unusual events while you were on the planet. Well, we've got one. Uh, the ship is experiencing a building surge in the negative energy coils. We can't trace the reason. 
When I made my request, I was thinking more along the lines of a strange ship dropping out of hyperdrive. But, since you called, I advise venting. We've tried. We're unable to. We're troubleshooting. We were wondering if we'd be clear to land to do maintenance. Sailstone granted passage to our little team and that is it. If you try landing without invitation, she'd crush you into a puddle. I'll see about getting permission. In the meantime, contact Corfu and explain the situation. And a distress signal probably wouldn't hurt. A distress signal, ma'am? I was under the impression that this is a covert operation. So was I. Goodness, no. This is a legal salvage operation. Get the distress signal underway and notify Corfu. Aye, aye, ma'am. What was that? Is that Bioball our ship? Yes. How's your can-do attitude now? Bolstered? Your man. Outbound call. Call Barbara Normal. Phase one is underway? And hello to you, Barbara. It is underway. Thank you for delivering your part of our arrangement. However, I won't be able to deliver entirely as discussed. As agreed, you mean? Why? Alexandra has taken your Bronson clone. This is not good. Not for anyone. The only person it's not good for is Bronson. He'll need to clear himself of making the purchase. There's nothing to link it to the Council. Perhaps, but now he's aware. The absence of a Bronson clone changes nothing. The safety and trust will simply need to make some adjustments. Your coup can move forward. You will still be hitting on a few fronts. In the meantime, it will change his behavior. You will have the Anunnaki gravity drive technology soon enough. It will be by far the most powerful engine and weapon in the theater. Your victory will be all but instantaneous. In comparison with that, this means nothing. Less than nothing. Do not underestimate Bronson, Doctor. He's already sniffing around too much. The existence of his clone will encourage him. Take it up with Alexandra. I'm taking it up with you. I have his DNA. I can assassinate the man with a designer pathogen if he gets to be anything more than a nuisance. Not good enough. Barbara, dear, I have your DNA too. Be a good girl, sit tight, and don't get up to any mischief. Give my love to the Admiral. Inside the office of Barbara Normal. That call certainly took a turn. Nothing unmanageable, though. She's dictating terms, Mr. White. New terms. Or weren't you listening? A dreadnought armed with the gravity drive is worth some irritation. It's a vast plan. There will be contingencies that will need to be accommodated on the fly. Are you that witch's PR man? Dr. Rising is being monitored, Admiral. How's your deal with the devil looking now, Normal? Inside the cockpit of the intradimensional ship. Uh, hell? It's an actual place, and we're going there? Surprised, but not surprised. Leviathan's got to come from somewhere, I suppose. Partially going there, negative Nellies, which means mostly not. So... Strangelets, they're kind of wacky, turning any matter they come into contact with into a homogenous goo. If Ezra got through, we'll get through. How can you be so sure? Because we are carrying her cargo. If she convinced Sailstone to let her pass, then she would have done the same for us. And, to boot, our gals at Evermore put in a good word. It appears that they may not have passed unscathed. We're receiving a mayday. Calling up long-range scan. Ship debris. That woman has ice in her veins. Wait, are you suggesting that she blew up her own ship? Yep. Intentionally? After sending a distress signal and in front of witnesses. To what end? My guess is that she plans on screwing over the people who've been funding her. 
give the impression that the mission failed and take the Invictus for herself. What if the Invictus won't launch? If that's actually her objective, then not launching is not an option. But it's insane. The ship could be unsalvageable. A superhero is only as good as their villains, and I am friggin' awesome. This ship is the registered property of Greenleaf University and has been taken without authorization. The Institute is registered under Jader Law and has invoked auto-destruct per Section 5, Paragraph 3 of the Lethal Means Statute. Oh, look, a countdown is being projected on the wall. Super handy. Mm, I miss being a prisoner. Countdown to self-destruct has now commenced and will continue until the ship explodes, or is landed, or until two recognized agents of the Institute authorize usage of this ship. In the meantime, have a safe flight, and please enjoy our complimentary snacks. Thank you. There's snacks? Mini pretzels. Here. Tamerlane, say something, you imbecile. Like what? Seriously? You should go back there and clip him upside the head. On it. How about introduce yourself to the ship and ask it not to auto-destruct? Ship, this is the Dean. Don't auto-destruct. The Dean is a recognized agent. The second agent is required. Auto-destruct imminent. Call one, sit back down, please. We'd like to leave. Oompa Loompas, do you know what imminent means? No. It means practice. Auto-destruct practice? Like a fire drill. What's a fire drill? You're a class act, Tamerlane. Jane, punch the Dean, please. It means we pretend like the ship is blowing up so that we can be better prepared should there ever be an auto-destruct for real. Auto-destruct imminent. Oh. Jane will fill you in. No, Jane will get on the array and notify the BGO of what is going on. Imminent means practice. Peanut? By taking one, I am not condoning your actions. Welcome back, woman of action. The array is dead. Excuse me, I need to get to the panel. Sure, but you're wasting your time. Unbelievable! The array is down. Yes? Peanut? You still have that coven thing, don't you? A gathering? We are now in the shadow of Leviathan. How can you be so sure? Ezra would have this whole thing timed. You should at least try. Sure. How do you get a redhead to argue with you? What does that have to do with anything? By saying something! There. No Terra. We're on our own. She appears when you tell a lame redhead joke? Always when I do. Generally when any member of the coven does. So, it's an emergency call? Only if it's an emergency death wish. Why are you so calm about all this? Because she's a goddess of unbridled, fiery destruction, and this, right now, is playing to her strengths. I'm starting to come around to that possibility. Well, welcome to Team I'm a Deity. By I'm, I meant me. You'd say you're. You know what her credo is? I have never done anything as destructive as what I am about to do. <laughs> That's funny because it's kind of true. <laughs> I like this part of your body. You can touch this if I can touch that. What's going on back there? I guess puberty, sort of. This is the best kind Unpack of that. Clones are drugged to suppress their sex drive. Safe to say the drugs are wearing off. More or less, they're hitting puberty at warp 10 with grown-up, mid-condition adult bodies and a flood of brand new horny urges. Huh, <sighs> of course, that's happening now. Ezra probably had that time too. Don't stress yourselves, I'll handle this too. I'm sure there's a merit badge in it for you. Ugh. If everyone could stay seated for this part of the auto-destruct practice... Oh, you have a nice body. He's right, you do. And a beautiful face. Uh, thank you. I try to take care of myself. It's working very well. Uh, I'll be right back. I just need to go talk to my colleagues. Should we do something? Like? Stop them? It keeps them occupied. That seems a little irresponsible. That's because it is. But only a little. 
Moving on. I've been thinking about Dr. Rising and your failure is not an option statement and how, thanks mostly to you, we're hand delivering to her the means by which she will bring a demon into this dimension. I also feel that we might be delivering her plan B. This ship is her escape if things go wrong with the Invictus. Sure, she'd blow it up in space if it served her no purpose. And sure, she'd blow it up on Sailstone once the clones were out if she was certain of her exit. But she can't be certain of her exit. Right. Any thoughts? Could she have a plan B? Possible. (laughs) More than possible. It's smart and consistent with the kind of mind that has put together the rest of the scheme. She always has a plan B. Once we touch down, she's not going to blow up this ship. So we land and call her on her bluff how, exactly? Just sitting here until it doesn't blow up? The clones can't leave the ship. Keeping them in here is the best way of ensuring that Dr. Rising doesn't get her hands on them. Or, alternatively, the clones aren't to be used as a conduit, but as currency. They're worth a lot, no? Oh yeah. What if we've brought a getaway ship and what amounts to seed money for her to start up somewhere else? It would be extremely convenient for her to have them here waiting. We can speculate all we want, but we don't know Dr. Rising's purpose, if any, for the clones. Whatever else they are, they are people who merit our protection. This ship is a controlled environment and our best chance at doing that. Agreed. But if the ship does blow up, how will you feel then? I'll feel... dead? I'm staying with them. You were correct from the start. I'm not needed on the Invictus. You two are, and someone has to watch the clones. Ezra could circle back for them. I still have some tricks left in my kit. She can try, but she won't succeed. Yogurt-covered raisins. The only bag. You should have them.